No, this never happened. What you just saw was a high school kid's imagination. When I was 16, I decided to film a movie about global warming in my hometown of Subotica in Serbia. That's me, the director slash actor. All my friends from school acted in the movie as well. We used a wind blower to throw leaves at this girl I was in love with. The wind blew her away. My then best friend too. Our teachers helped us out as well. We had partial nudity, romance, and a character who did drugs and died. Even my dad and uncle had cameo appearances as meteorologists. Pretty good acting for two lawyers, eh? Our special effects looked like this. And this. We even had a film premiere at our school, with a red carpet and everything. The audience enjoyed the creative ways in which we killed off our friends in the film. This guy got sucked in by a twister. And this guy just got frozen stiff. Heck, we even got interviewed by the local media after the premiere. The story was that climate change had caused disastrous weather events in our country and we had been caught off guard. Well, exactly 10 years after our film, this happened. To call this the flood of the century may sound like a cliché, but in fact, it's the perfect description. The worst floods to swamp the Balkans since records began 120 years ago. When the floods hit, I was working for a national television station covering the devastation. Unlike my movie, this was very real. Even our then Prime Minister Alexander Vucic was freaking out. Whoa, take it easy. Talking to people on the ground, it really felt like a freak event. But the freak events kept coming. Tornadoes, extreme hail, snowstorms, more flooding. Luckily for us, Serbia's prime minister made it his personal mission to save everyone from disaster. Here he is saving a child from a blizzard. <laughs> he fell. <laughs> Might need some help himself. Nope, he's fine. What a brave man. Not like this guy behind him who's freezing his ass off. Come on, man. It's just a little snow. What a wuss. On the other hand, our Prime Minister could brave out torrential rain and personally deliver supplies to flood victims. Yet despite all of these superhero powers, he couldn't save us. No one person could. Running away to a different country wouldn't help either, because the problems Serbia was facing were global. There was something much larger that was broken. We were all aware of this, but we didn't know how to fix it.
Poštovani gledalci, dobro večer. Danas je 4. januar 1992. godine. Ekološka situacija danas u svijetu je krajnje dramatična. Na ovom globusu sve crne mrlje pokazuju mjesta gdje de facto života više nema. These were the Surrealists, a popular Yugoslav comedy sketch show on Sarajevo television that started in the 1980s. In one episode, they predicted a grim future for our environment. Na to je naravno uticao najviše Černobil koji se desio, ja mislim, jedno tri godine prije naše serije i koji je upozorio ljudski rod šta može da se desi ukoliko tehnologija razbijanja atoma izgubi ljudsku kontrolu. One of the atomic reactors at the Chernobyl atomic power plant near the city of Kiev was damaged. As the cloud of radiation grows, so too does anxiety throughout Europe. Radiation levels in at least half a dozen countries are three to twenty times above normal. Ali vrlo brzo smo mi to zaboravili. Zato i jesmo napravili tu zajebanciju sa krškom, elektranom koja se nalazi u Sloveniji, između Slovenije i Hrvatske, koja je bila jedina nuklearna elektrana u Jugoslaviji. Da nisi vidio curu, čekaj, ima pola sata, kasnije mi žuta maska, ima čize, ovako krastu, ima ovdje veliku. Prag tolerancije ljudskog roda se uvijek spušta, pa onda jedan od tih junaka kaže ovo nije radioaktivno, ovo je samo malo radioaktivno. Yes, many quickly forgot about the dangers of nuclear power despite Chernobyl's lasting legacy. This entire region has seen a surge in cancer cases and birth defects, especially among the children of Chernobyl and their children. Some Chernobyl residents tried to protect themselves in different ways. Vodka is very good protection. But for many, vodka didn't help. Thousands died from cancer-related illnesses caused by Chernobyl's radiation. We've all heard of Chernobyl because that disaster was propagated by Western media as proof of Soviet incompetence. But if what happened at Chernobyl was ineptitude, there certainly was no excuse for what the U.S. did on purpose. This isn't Hiroshima or Nagasaki. The U.S. started this a year after World War II ended. Not on enemy grounds, but on U.S.-controlled soil. Have you ever dreamed of living an idyllic existence under the waving coconut palms of a remote South Sea island? Of course you have. There are only 167 human beings here. 60 of them children. They are a gentle and lovable people. In 1946, these gentle and lovable people who live on the Bikini Atoll of the Marshall Islands were politely told by the U.S. Army that the U.S. is going to turn their paradise into hell. The Marshall Islands is where the nuclear age began, where something like uh, the equivalent of one Hiroshima every day was exploded in the Marshall Islands for, t for 12 years. This was not just a nuclear experiment. It was a human experiment. The United States needed some guinea pigs to study what the, uh, the effects of radiation would do. To the AEC Argon Labs in Chicago last week came seven men, natives of the Marshall Islands. John is mayor of Rongola, which is 100 miles from Bikini. He and the rest were irradiated by our March 1954 hydrogen bomb test. John, as we said, is a savage, but a happy, amenable savage. This happy and amenable savage, as he was referred to, lost his son to leukemia. Many other children also died of leukemia, and other residents developed thyroid tumors due to exposure to radiation. They begged for international help. The world reacted by celebrating their demise with a new style of swimsuits named Bikini, after the destroyed Bikini Atoll. Some of our people were injected with or coerced to drink fluids laced with radiation. Other experimentation involved the purposeful and premature resettlement of people 
on islands highly contaminated by weapons tests to study how human beings absorb radiation from their foods and environment. Thousands of natives were exposed to radiation, with many developing serious illnesses or dying from them. Over the years, the number and the yield of weapons tested have rapidly increased, and so have the radioactive hazards from such testing. The number of children and grandchildren with cancer in their bones, with leukemia in their blood, or with poison in their lungs, this is not a natural health hazard. The malformation of even one baby, who may be born long after all of us have gone, should be of concern to us all. U.S. soldiers were also exposed to harmful radiation. My country, the United States, has done bad things. There is a long, long history of bad choices, bad wars, uh, and uh, basically military, industrial led uh, bad choices. By the time the Cold War had ended and the nuclear arms race lost its momentum, the U.S. had amassed huge amounts of radioactive waste, depleted uranium. But where others saw an unusable waste product, Washington decided to put its uranium to use. Battlefields and fighting are by nature hazardous to your health. Some hazards are easy to identify and well understood. However, some lesser hazards from new technological applications are not so well known and recognized. One of these newer applications is the use of depleted uranium in munitions and equipment armor. Depleted uranium is radioactive waste left over from uranium enrichment for nuclear weapons and fuel rods. Some of the low-level nuclear waste needs to be deposited somewhere. Ne moraju da skladište svoj nuklearni otpad, nego ga stavljaju u oružje i na taj način ga seju po celom svetu. Skladištenje nuklearnog otpada košta. Depleted uranium was widely used in tank and cannon ammunitions for the first time ever in 1991, during the Gulf War in Iraq and Kuwait. Upon returning home, many U.S. veterans started feeling strange. This was labeled by the government as the Gulf War Syndrome. A number of U.S. soldiers returning from Iraq have been suffering from a variety of cancers and mysterious illnesses. Some of them think they've been made sick by depleted uranium used in weapons by American troops. And U.S. soldiers weren't the only ones who suffered. Hundreds of Iraqis living near the battlefields have died from mysterious cancers. Deformed children have been born to Iraqi soldiers who fought in the war. Just before the war, the Gulf War, uh, we studied uh, only three or four mortalities in a month. And now we are studying 30 or 35 patients dying in our department each month. It is an epidemic and it is like the Hiroshima's uh, tragedy. As in Hiroshima, increased percentage of congenital malformation, increase of a tumor, of malignancy, leukemia, brain tumor, also in our society increase in this percentage. In 1992, the U.S. Army Environmental Policy Institute, or AEPI, was ordered by the Assistant Secretary of the Army to find a way to reduce the toxicity of depleted uranium ammunitions. In 1995, the AEPI published the results of its investigation. The report concluded that if depleted uranium enters the body, it has the potential to generate significant medical consequences. It talked about the risks of radiation-induced cancer and genetic effects, and how uranium concentrates in the bone, kidney, and liver. Even though it concluded that depleted uranium is inherently toxic, only two months after the report was published, the U.S. used depleted uranium munitions during NATO's bombing of Bosnia and Herzegovina. For almost a month, NATO forces pounded Serbian targets in what they called an attempt to bring peace to Bosnia. One of the targets was a military factory in the town of Hajici, just 10 kilometers from the capital, Sarajevo. 
in 2001, an Italian freelance journalist found three 30mm bullets on this compound, depleted uranium bullets. Najdrastičnije primjer stanovnika Hadžića koji su prema ispitivanjima instituta u Vinči bili izloženi radijaciji 2000 puta većoj od dozvoljene. Svi njihovi raspadni produkti osinomašenog uranijuma nalaze se na listi kancerogenih substanciji Svjetske zdravstvene organizacije. Od 1995. godine prema 2000. godine imamo naglo povećani broj malignije obolenja. Četiri puta više je obilevalo stanovništvo istočnog Sarajeva od malignije obolenja. NATO's investigation publicly presented a different story. All the research that we've seen shows no link between depleted uranium and leukemia or cancer. The team used radiological monitoring devices and detected low levels of radiation. Right. Only three targets in Bosnia were confirmed to have been bombed by depleted uranium. And this was just a warm-up. A conflict was brewing not too far from Bosnia, in the Federal Republic of Yugoslavia, then comprising of Serbia and Montenegro, or more accurately, in Serbia's southern province of Kosovo. Just like the US experimented on the local population in the Pacific and its own soldiers in the Gulf War, a new kind of experiment was about to unfold in the heart of Europe. So NATO manufactured a case for military intervention. Kosovo today, it's the most dangerous part of Europe. The province that rebels want to turn into Europe's newest country. Our objective in Kosovo remains clear, to stop the killing and achieve a durable peace. And allow these people to live in peace. To live in peace. Peace, freedom and prosperity. The peacekeeping operation. To build peace. And build peace. To live in peace. Peaceful. Yes to peace. To just peace. And peace. 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 Yeah, they all wanted peace. A peace of Serbia. Thus, Serbia became the first country that was bombed and punished for fighting terrorism. Albanian forces based in Albania were entering Serbia, uh, carrying out terrorist attacks in order to elicit a harsh Serbian response, which could be used as a justification for uh, NATO, in, meaning U.S. intervention. Every country responds harshly to terrorism. And even NATO commander Wesley Clark admitted that bombing Serbia was only going to intensify the atrocities, not stop them. But can we stop it on the ground? No, you can't stop paramilitary actions from the air. We all knew that. As the invasion began, he informed the press that the predictable, his word, effect of the bombing would be to sharply escalate Serbian atrocities, which is what happened. U.S. started bombing Serbia. Serbia started driving out Albanians from Kosovo. If you look back at the discussion, uh, the way it's framed is it was a humanitarian intervention because we had to stop uh, Serbian atrocities. To prevent the ethnic cleansing. Ethnic cleansing and killing. And that's the way it's presented in the West. You have to keep quiet about the fact that the Serbian atrocities were the predicted and expected consequence of the invasion. So we invaded in order to prevent atrocities which were caused by the invasion. Western politicians even went so far as to call what was happening in Kosovo genocide. The racial genocide. is genocidal attacks on the Kosovo people. Even though a UN court ruled in 2001 that there was no genocide in Kosovo, that didn't matter. The U.S. had already established its military base in Kosovo, and it wasn't going anywhere. In bombing the land with depleted uranium, NATO had committed acts that came much, much closer to an actual genocide. In 2000, NATO disclosed DU weapons were used during its mission to bring peace to Kosovo. The Pentagon couldn't hide cancer deaths among NATO soldiers who were serving in the region. Just like in the Gulf War, it began with the soldiers. But this time, it wasn't the Americans.
stasera dal Tg1 sarà un comitato speciale della Nato a valutare le eventuali conseguenze sulla salute dei militari dopo l'uso di armi all'uranio impoverito in Bosnia e nel Kosovo. Mattarella ha anche fornito delle cifre. Finora i casi segnalati di militari malati o deceduti sono 30. 21 sono soldati che hanno prestato servizio in Bosnia e in Kosovo, 7 è il numero dei morti. After the NATO bombing, Italian troops took control of the Italian K4 sector a part of Serbia's Kosovo province that was heavily targeted with depleted uranium ammunition. Since 2001, the number of sick or dead Italian soldiers sharply increased. Se i dati accertati solo dall'osservatorio militare, per cui certamente in difetto rispetto a quelli reali, sono di oltre 350 decessi ed oltre 7500 malati. The final report of the Italian Parliamentary Commission on Depleted Uranium concluded that Italian soldiers had been exposed to shocking levels of depleted uranium and that it helped sow deaths and illnesses. L'uranio impoverito è causa di tumori ed è arrivato il momento di dirlo con chiarezza. E questa è la conclusione della commissione parlamentare d'inchiesta sull'uso dell'uranio impoverito. In May of 2015, in a case concerning an Italian soldier who died after serving in Kosovo, the appeals court in Rome ruled that there is an undisputed connection between the exposure to depleted uranium and cancer. Italian soldiers were not alone in this. Soldiers from Belgium, Spain, Portugal, the Netherlands, and other countries who served in Kosovo also saw a spike in cancer-related illnesses. But if all this happened to soldiers who were only temporarily stationed in the region, what happened to the people who live in Serbia? This is southeastern Serbia. Three municipalities here were bombed with depleted uranium. Preševo, Buenovac and Vranje. I was born in the village of Buštanje, on the territory of the Preševo. There was a bombardment of uranium with the uranium. My mother died before two years of cancer. My parents and my brother died before a year. Sergeant Aleksic is a Serbian lawyer who decided to follow his Italian colleague's example and try to bring NATO to court for its crimes. In our country, from 1991. Depleted uranium dust or smoke may be inhaled if respiratory protection is not worn. It may also be picked up and ingested if gloves are not worn and the dust is not washed off. Heavy metal poisoning may occur, which can cause damage to internal organs and tissues. The second concern, radioactivity. Health effects of ionizing radiation depend on whether it is alpha, beta or gamma. Ta čuvena alfa čestica, ako se nalazi u vašem organizmu, može da prođe u drugu ćeliju i da normalna ćelija napravi malignu ćeliju. Osinomašeni uranio može utiče na bilo koji organ u telu, pošto se zadržava u plućima, može da izazove karcinom pluća, može da izazove maligne bolesti kosne srži, može da izazove maligne bolesti digestivnog trakta, odnosno creva, znači praktično može da izazove malignu bolest bilo kog dela tela. Near the town of Vranje, NATO heavily bombed the surrounding mountain of Pljačkovica with depleted uranium ammunition. When the TV tower was hit, a group of workers from Vranje's waterworks were sent in to secure and clear up the damages. Eight workers were there every day for 25 days. Od njih osmoro, sedmorica su umrli od karcinoma, a osmi se leči od karcinoma pluća. Stojadin Stošić was among those eight workers. To je udisano. Prašinama, kopaš, praviš rupe za stubovi da betoniraš. To se sve udiše, ona je prašina. Vodu piješ, izvor nema 200 metra tu. To je sve isto bilo bombardovano. Osmoro nas je bilo. 
Единно съм я остал от ти, осмор. But Stoyadin is by no means in the clear. И мене починя. По неки път се по-мало гушим плици летос до гушени неки подолу аз. И ба све една. Под кредит съм да се лечу. Троје деце. Деца су ми била шест години тај. Наймали ги син. Тјеркице, една осам, една десет ноја. Каде то било је. Не ми је лако било. Шта је, боримо се за живот. Stoyadin's friend and colleague Goran Mitic, who drove the group every day to the bombed site, was the youngest of the seven who died from depleted uranium exposure. My brother Goran Mitic, he was working in the water, because he was a chauffeur, he was a worker. Goran was also transporting the ground that the workers had dug up, thus inhaling the dust. He was after eight years later. Бомбардовање, болу груди, ми смо одма кој доктора, меѓути мој има рак плуќа. Ми смо се борели, ишли на клинички, оперисали, молили на зрачен, на све, али не е могло. Значи не е имало спаса, оперисање е било, али не е имало спаса. Значи и тамо кога смо тишли у Белград, доктор ме пита, де е био што е радио, ќер оние се знали. И они само се тим луѓи погледали, значи тоа е тоа. Јас сум била три и осем години. Имала сум троје деце. Син ми е био девет години, чија средна седем и мање е била пет години. Значи тоа е било борба за живот. Некад ми не сме имал да јадемо, ја и деца. Јас сум по едно кришко ве бијал дневно, да би имало за некој. I was 40 kilos. He was the only one who didn't want to get out of the way. He had pain and pain. He was the only one who was in the way. He was the only one who was in the way. He was the only one who was in the way. He was the only one who was in the way. He was the only one who was in the way. He was the only one who was in the way. He was the only one who was in the way. He was the only one who was in the way. When he heard that he was on the way, when he heard that he had passed, he wanted all his life to kill him, to kill him. What will I do without my father? And what I am, I am here. But it is not that. That's why he was in the NATO. I told him that. Today, the story is about the war. The NATO will never go back. If you could turn back to your colleagues now, what would you have said? That there would never be any more of what was going on. These couples in Serbia's capital, Belgrade, decided to get married during the 1999 NATO bombing. It was a clear message to those who were sowing death and destruction, even going so far as bombing maternity hospitals. But as some of these couples soon found out, starting a family wasn't as easy as it was before the bombing. 100% je porastao muški sterilitet u poslednjih godina u Srbiji. I vi vidite sve veći broj mladih parova, kod kojih su na izgled zdravi i muškarac i žena koji ne mogu da imaju decu. Dobar dan, dugo, evo vraćam ti se ja. And it looks like it wasn't all that great for many kids who were born 
Prva studija Komisije za istragu posledica NATO bombardovanja pokazuje da kod dece koja su rođena oko 1999. godine raste broj obolelih od malignih bolesti. A naročito leukemije kod dece od 5. do 9. godine. Broj obolele dece od malignih bolesti krvi i mozga u značajnom je porastu i od 1999. godine je svake godine sve veći. Serbia has been through wars before. These couples thought that once the bombing stops, things will get back to normal. None of them knew about the damage a single particle of depleted uranium can cause. And how much of it was dropped on them? 15 tona osiromašenog uranijuma, takva je procena, je isporučeno Srbiji i Crnoj Gori 99. godine. 15 tona. I guess you can't help but ask, how was any of this legal? By using depleted uranium ammunition, NATO violated international humanitarian law. Oh, so it wasn't legal. But aside from depleted uranium use, NATO contaminated Serbia in other ways as well. Zato što su bombardovali fabrike, bombardovali su elektropostrojenja, gde imate jako puno polihlorobifenila, to su jedinjenja koje su izuzetno toksična, kancerogena. Recimo, jedan litar polihlorobifenila može da vam zagadi milijardu litara vode. Onda to je bio piralen. To su bili teški metali svih vrsta. All this chemistry sounds pretty scary. Pirulin is a toxic and cancerous substance used as a cooling fluid in high-voltage electrical transformers, several of which were on NATO's hit list in Serbia. When NATO bombed one of these transformers in the southern city of Niš, 70 tons of this toxic fluid was released. Most of it burned off, while about 7 tons went into the ground, thus penetrating our food and water cycle. And then, this happened. And this. We sent our pilots into the air to destroy the oil refinery systems of Serbia, and they did so successfully. Kako možete bombardovati rafineriju nafte u Novom Sadu, koji se nalazi stotinama kilometara daleko od Kosova, koji je u neposrednoj blizini glavnog izvorišta jednog velikog grada, trećeg grada po veličini u Srbiji, sa zaštitom Albanaca od strašnih Srba, naravno nikad. After all, NATO destroyed only 13 Yugoslav army tanks during the entire 78-day bombing campaign. So what was their prime target? 60% ciljeva su upravo bili civilni objekti da ih nije bilo vojske. Oštetili su ekološki sistem gde god su gađali postrojenja koje su bila na mapama hazarda. Svaka zemlja ih ima i svaka zemlja ih dostavlja javnosti. Zašto? Zato što je potrebno da u slučaju upravo takvih nekakvih katastrofa se zna koja postrojenja treba zaštititi i koja postrojenja ne treba dirati. Oni su namjerno to bombardovali, što znači da su hteli da vide šta će se dešavati sa stanovništom u okolini. Bukvalno su od nas napravili eksperimentalno područje, jednu veliku eksperimentalnu laboratoriju. I u tome se ogleda sva genocidnost NATO-a i njihove agresije 1999. godine. NATO's military campaign was named Operation Noble Anvil, but was mistranslated to Operation Merciful Angel in Serbian. A dark, twisted angel at that. One that killed both Serbs and Albanians, who it was allegedly trying to protect. Despite the cancer rate among Kosovo Albanians, according to intelligence sources, tripling since 1999, the self-proclaimed Kosovo authorities don't dare defy the official NATO narrative on depleted uranium, as NATO countries vastly supported their declaration of independence. Instead, Albanians got a private American hospital in Kosovo's capital, Pristina. I guess that's one way to do business give them cancer, and then earn money by treating them. And the worst thing about this whole thing was that the depleted uranium was here to stay. And as it takes billions of years for uranium to decay, the shadow of the ghost of the merciful angel will hang over the region virtually forever. After experimenting on people with nuclear weapons and depleted uranium, and exposing them to toxic chemicals, the experiment continued with genetically modified organisms, or GMO. Genetically modified organisms are obtained by genetic manipulation 
gena iz jedne vrste i njihovim prebacivanjem u drugu vrstu i isključivo u laboratorijama. Takvi proizvodi se ne mogu dobiti u prirodi u običajnim ukrštanjem ili procesom hibridizacije u institutima i drugim centrima. One of four groups to introduce genes into plants in 1983 was Monsanto. The Monsanto Corporation was among the first to conduct field trials of genetically modified crops in 1987 and quickly became the world's most prominent GMO producer. Companies like Monsanto added rat genes into lettuce to make a plant that produces vitamin C or splice genes from moths into apple plants, offering protection from fire blight, a bacterial disease that damages apples and pears. Genetička modifikacija podrazumeva i obacivanje primjera radi gena ribe u paradajz da bi se dobio paradajz sa čvršćom pokožicom koji će imati duži period korišćenja u odnosu na domaći paradajz koji će se lakše transportovati i neće biti osjetljivi na udare. What's so bad about GMO? Loše je što dosadašnja metodologija koja je primjenjivana u proizvodnoj praksi od 1996. pa na ovom, dakle dve decenije, Praktično se smatra da je na nivou operacije mozga sa lopatom. Sada nova metodologija koju je Monsanto kupio posle akvizicije od strane Bayera, sam Monsanto tvrdi, odnosno njihovi stručnjaci, da je ona 90% pouzdanija nego prethodna metoda. To znači da smo mi praktično bili celokupno čovečanstvo koje je imalo bilo kakav kontakt sa GMO, zamorčići dve decenije.